born of nuclear radiation and destined to walk the earth forever, welcome to Godzilla Revithon! What's up, YouTubers of the world? Mega Geek Mixer here, ready to give to you guys the 17th installment to the Godzilla franchise and the second to the Godzilla Heisei era, Godzilla vs. Biollante, which was which came out in 1989, the year I was born to be exact. <laughs> this movie is is very underrated. It's actually a really great movie in the Godzilla franchise. The plot and stories are amazing, and trust me guys, I recommend you get it because it's amazing and I'll tell you more about it as we're going on and my overall thoughts of it. Movie starts off with Godzilla with a recap of Godzilla caused a rampage around Tokyo in the previous film, Return of Godzilla, Godzilla or Godzilla 1984. It was recapping his destruction and his battle with the Super X to when he fell into Mount Mehara. But even though he they succeed in stopping him, Godzilla didn't die because yeah, even though he's in Mount Mehara, he's still alive. But then, but then there's also the fact that after in the aftermath of his destruction, sci Japanese scientists and a, a bio major gr American group known as bio major a terrorist group were gathering Godzilla cells. Yes, Godzilla cells are one of the plot devices in this story here. Yeah. It's where we're introduced to Godzilla cells, which play a big major role into the creation of the monster, Biollante. But we'll move on to Biollante here in a minute. There's also the fact that there was a fight over the Godzilla cells between the Japanese, the Americans, and a Ceradian dude who, who this one man alone, they will pretty much almost accomplish anything. But the Godzilla cells are taken by this guy, and we're also introduced to a guy named Dr. Shirigami, who who ends up wanting to use the Godzilla cells for an experiment. But unfortunately, it in the process makes him lose his daughter, Erica. And then that's when five years pass. Godzilla's been stuck in the mountain for five years. And during that, during the gap, they made an alarm system for Godzilla in case he ever shows up. Four alarm systems to be exact. Number one is for in case there's any climate or geographical, I mean geological, geological <laughs> issues that revolve around Godzilla. And the second one is in case they hear, hear any physical contact movement around Godzilla. And then the third one, Godzilla appears. The fourth one, Godzilla makes it to to the island of Japan. <laughs> so they were making sure to be ready in case he ever came back. And <laughs> they were smart enough to do that because when they had all those alerts, they were making sure to be ready. And and one of the re weapons they made sure to be ready was the Super X2, um, an upgraded version of the Super X. <laughs> but, and, it's, and also another weapon that they used to actually defeat Godzilla, known as the anti-nuclear energy bacteria, which also is another big plot device in the story. But, <laughs> acts for Godzilla himself, eventually, of course, he wakes up. How he wakes up is because... Mm, there's a, remember those uh major bio major Americans and that Seradian guy. Well, they're fighting for they didn't fight for just those G cells in five years prior, but in the present time, they are also fighting for that anti nuclear energy bacteria. All these guys using these these devices for their own different needs, <laughs> and unfortunately, when one of the bio majors decide to hold this given an ultimatum to give them the anti-nuclear energy bacteria to him. If they don't, he will release Godzilla, and that's exactly what happened. No, bear in mind, guys, the Japanese did try to comply, but there was a little issue with the, with the trade that, unfortunately, the bomb couldn't be stopped. Godzilla is back and is ready to cause more destruction. And it was great seeing him in the usual terms of fighting the army, but... Then they go into the the big boss plane battle that was that was the first introduction in the previous film. 
yeah, like I said in the previous film, guys, I'm glad that the Heisei era realized that they needed to step up their game and just not being traditional tanks and guns and planes, but actually a bigger, stronger boss battle plane for Godzilla. Because this one was uh, providing a little challenge because it had a fire mirror which could reflect Godzilla's beam. And it was working at first until eventually the mirror got damaged by Godzilla constantly using his heat beam but still an effective weapon. And now let's go ahead and why not go into the real thing. Of the real breakout star of the movie was Biolante. Now, if you guys are wondering how Biolante, it, this plant monster, was created, you remember Dr. Shirigami. Well, after five years, he was able to get his daughter's Erica's DNA inside roses. But eventually, those roses were dying, so he decided he needed the Godzilla cells. So he takes both a splice, so he splices Godzilla cells with the roses and Erica's DNA, and thus, Biolante was born, and Biolante's presence was first known when these when those terrorist guys were raiding Dr. Shirigami's lab but attacked those guys and killed one of them and then finally making it out into the lake and eventually she and Godzilla would have their first battle unfortunately in her rose form she didn't stand a chance against Godzilla's heat beam but that was all, all okay because eventually she came back as this big giant crocodile and man was it meant incredible i mean this giant big crocodile how big it was and being able to have a more more of an advantage on godzilla was something but also about this godzilla fight is that it introduced a new ability of godzilla's that being the nuclear pulse an energy that comes from outside of his body and all and all of his surroundings it was a very effective weapon <laughs> and also seeing how those two fought each other such as um, Biolante using her radioactive sap, Godzilla using his e beam into her mouth and shooting, shooting a hole out into her head. Crazy. But like I said, guys, eventually Godzilla was defeated thanks to anti-nuclear energy bacteria. But another important thing about this film is the introduction to one of the most famous recurring human characters of all, Mickey Sagusa. This was her first introduction into the Heisei era, played by Megumi Odaka. Odaka? I hope I said that right. If I did it, I do apologize for that. But yes, this was her first time in the Godzilla films, and she would be a recurring character throughout the franchise. And she and she is pretty much one of the only humans that Godzilla has ever come to respect. Why? Well, it's in this one scene when she's trying to use her powers to delay Godzilla's landing in Japan, but his power, but his mind and psychic connection with her is a bit overwhelming that exhausts her. But what made it show that Godzilla respected her, that even though after their little confrontation, he just left her as a sign of respect. Yes, that's what... And guys, this is why Godzilla vs. Biolante is one of the great films. Not just the characters, but the monsters battle and the plot device. But most of all, how the military got creative with you know, fighting Godzilla. It wasn't just the planes and then the Super X. But when they finally got the inner anti-nuclear energy bacteria in him, his temperature was low. So they used a device called TC. I think TC systems, some systems that allow artificial electricity, and they were using that to to raise his temperature. So yes, definitely, guys, if you do not have this film, I would recommend getting it. It's going to be a little hard to find because this Godzilla movie took a while to get here to the West. It took actually until 1992 to get here in the in the west but they do have a blu-ray version of it now and if you guys can find it i once again highly recommend you get this film it is definitely one of the underrated films that you must give a watch not just for the monster battle but the plots and how the military fights this is definitely one of my top 10 guys and in, i hope i hope it's y'all's and if not hey we're all entitled to our opinions but that is all for today guys and and i'll see you guys well not just yet i meant to say if you're enjoying my videos click that like button subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when i make more videos and if you guys are also thinking people should see these videos share them with your friends share them anywhere you need 
and I'll see you guys in the next installment of Godzilla Revithon! Until then, Mega Geek Mixer signing out. Bye!